Good afternoon. I'm Danilo Concepcion. I'm the operations manager at St. Joseph Hospital in Orange, California. This micro webinar series is intended to introduce fellows and new practitioners to the core concepts of infection prevention and patient safety in outpatient hemodialysis clinics. This is the second in the series of three micro webinars. The first addresses incorporating infection prevention and routine rounding. The third webinar focuses on infection control and survey readiness. Here are the, the objectives for this section. Discuss the nephrologist's responsibilities regarding water and dialysate. Explain the critical water system components directly impacting water dialysate quality. Review ultra-pure dialysate. Clarify the composition of dialysate and how it's proportioned. Mm -hmm. The objective of this segment is to discuss the nephrologist's responsibilities regarding water and dialysate. The interpretive guidance is the CMS conditions for coverage for end-stage renal disease facilities that detail the regulations that must be followed in order to receive Medicare payment. Simply stated, the medical director is ultimately responsible for the safety and quality of the water used for patient treatments and that the medical director must be knowledgeable of the water treatment system installed and assure that the system as installed will produce Amy quality water. Product water used to prepare dialysate or concentrate at the dialysis facility or to process dialysis for reuse need to be monitored for colony forming units and endotoxin levels. Regulations does not specify what to do when the levels exceed the allowable limits. Because of the risk of adverse events such as pyrogenic reactions, the results of colony forming units and endotoxin levels must be balanced against the risk of uremia if a patient is not dialyzed. The balance between these two risks will depend on the level of contamination and time of exposure on the one hand and the medical condition of the patient on the other hand. Because this balance will almost certainly vary from circumstance to circumstance, the final decision of whether to discontinue dialysis rests with the medical director. Facilities must monitor the water chemical analysis and microbial testing and take actions promptly if results are outside of the AMI standards. The word promptly could be interpreted as repeating cultures or disinfecting the system, followed by repeat cultures within 48 hours of waiting results. Any staff member who operates the water treatment system must complete a training program approved by the medical director and the governing body prior to independently performing water treatment system tasks. Per regulations, an annual audit and competency must be performed on these individuals. Interpretive guidance V274 requires that water and dialysate monitoring must be reported in the QAPI materials and the medical director must be involved in analyzing and addressing test results outside of the expected parameters. Laboratory results from the different re recognized dialysis labs include a signature section for the physician reviewing the results on the report document and is filed for future CMS DHS, DHS survey re references. Uh, this is a sample technical quality report that lists items that are typically reviewed during a survey. The two items circled will be a focus of a survey. The date of the culture cannot be after disinfection of the water system. The obvious consequence is that the results will always be negative. Culture and endotoxin sampling should be prior to disinfection. The sample, the, this sample template can be attained uh, from ASN. Disinfection should be proactive rather than retroactive with schedules designed to prevent bacterial proliferation rather than to eliminate bacteria once they have proliferated to an accept unacceptable level. Levels of bacteria in the toxin should be monitored to demonstrate that the disinfection program is effective rather than to indicate when disinfection should be performed. If the monthly test results indicate a trend of unacceptable level, adjustments to the frequency of disinfection of the water system may be needed. For example, if disinfection is being performed on a monthly basis, 
the schedule may need to be adjusted to twice a month in order to have results within acceptable levels. Do not accept positive or negative as a result. You want a full count of every viable uh, colony. And watch for results that consistently have no growth or zero results. This may indicate the lab may be using uh, a calibrated loop or the wrong medium. Error in obtaining samples, such as prepping the sample port with bactericidal swab or obtaining the sample immediately after disinfection, can result in zero growth. Review the monthly results for trends. Water for dialysis is not sterile and should not consistently be zero, or review if there is inconsistency from month to month in which the levels fluctuate from high unacceptable levels to acceptable levels. This could indicate a serious problem of bifold formation in the water and distribution system. The current CMS interpretive guidance references Amy standard published in 2004 and is enforceable as regulations. There have been notable updates to the Amy standard since 2000, 2004. The yellow is the current minimum levels required by regulations and the red are the current Amy published levels. Regulations cannot be automatically adopted and updated to the new Amy levels. The two levels of regulatory levels and best, best practice levels are the choice of the facility. But if the facility's policy and procedure references the new updated Amy levels, those levels now become enforceable as regulations for the facility. All the items listed in the slide for testing and maintenance is necessary to ensure that the RO system can deliver the highest quality of water and the results can typically be trended that would indicate report portending issues. Total chlorine is the most critical item as issues with total chlorine can result immediately without any prior indications and can lead to patient exposure to water unsafe for dialysis. Our second uh, segment is um, to explain the critical water system components directly impacting water and dialysate quality. Potable water from the water provider can vary significantly. Due to the quality of the potable water, the types of components needed may be different from dialysis facility to dialysis facility. But the two in yellow, the carbon filter and the RO membrane are the two critical component that is included in every water system for dialysis. Granulated activated carbon is used to remove organics and chlorine chloramine from the potable water. Chlorine can destroy components of the water purification system and chloramine exposure can hemolyze blood. The term total chlorine Chlorine and chloramine have been used interchangeably, have been a topic of some confusion. The maximum allowable level for total chlorine, the free and bound chlorine combined, is less than or equal to 0.5 milligrams per liter for post-bleach disinfection residual test. The maximum allowable level for chloramine is less than or equal to 0.1 milligrams per liter. There is no direct test for chloramine. The level of chloramine is determined by two separate measurements that include a total chlorine and a free chlorine measurement. The chloramine level is the difference between the total chlorine and free chlorine. Performing the dual test and calculation has led to errors in determining the chloramine concentration. CMS is allowing the simplification of the test to the one method of performing total chlorine. If a facility is doing only one test for total chlorine, then the less than or equal to 0.1 milligrams per liter limit must be used for the maximum allowable level to ensure patient protection from chloramine exposure. Breakthrough occurs when the carbon media can no longer effectively reduce the concentration of chloramine. In the event that the sample from the first carbon tank is greater than 0.1 part per million for total chlorine, the water can be tested after the second tank. If the second tank sample is less than or equal to 0.1 part per million, dialysis can be continued with frequency of testing performed at every half hour until replacement of the first tank can be performed. Dialyzing 
dependent only on the secondary tank cannot exceed 72 hours. Uh, component failure is not the only issue that can make dialysis water unsafe. In this case review, 33 patients admitted to the hospital in a 14-day period for anemia with at least one patient reportedly diagnosed with hemolytic anemia and myocardial infarction occurred. The test strips used by staff to detect total chlorine were found to be not reactive to chlorine. If using test strips, they should be validated upon opening, dated, kept dry, and used according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Most strips require quality control validations, and surveyors will review the quality control practice for the use of the test strips as part of their survey. An RO membrane will remove an average of 96 to 99% of all incoming solute. This includes dissolved inorganic, large organics, greater than 200 molecular weight, endotoxins, viruses, and bacteria. Thin film composite is the most commonly used membrane material in dialysis today, with an average service life of one to five years. With osmosis, water moves through a semi-permeable membrane from the lower concentration of solutes to the higher concentration of solutes until equilibrium is achieved. Reverse osmosis works by using a high pressure pump to increase the pressure on the salt side of the RO membrane and force the water across the semi-permeable RO membrane, leaving almost all, around 95 to 99% of dissolved solids behind. The one contaminant that the RO membrane cannot remove is chloramine, hence the need for the carbon filter uh, upstream of the RO. This is a filtration spectrum. The two circle processes is what is used in our dialysis application. Reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration have the feature, as you note in the spectrum, of blocking endotoxin, viruses, and bacteria. Also, a dialyzer is classified and, and, and actually is equivalent to the ultrafiltration um, um, process. It can block the same endotoxin viruses and bacteria as the two other uh, principles or processes. Our uh, next objective uh, is um, um, review of the ultra pure dialysate. The ability to provide ultra pure dialysate is available in today's current technology. According to the International Standards Organization and the AMI standards, Ultrapure dialysate is classified as ultrapure when the total viable bacteria count is less than 0.1 CFU per ml and an endotoxin content of less than 0.03 endotoxin units. As you can see, it is definitely a lot, lot more um, pure than the standard dialysate of less than 200 and two endotoxin units that our current dialysate uh, regulations require. An ultrafilter is an optional component with an absolute filter rating in the pore size range of 0 0.01 micron to 0 0.05 micron with a typical nominal molecular weight cutoff of 20,000 Daltons. It can be placed in the dialysis machine in the dialysate fluid pathway before the dialyzer and can effectively reduce bacterial and endotoxin results to the ultra-pure quality. Other points of use for, uh, location for the, uh, for the ultra filter is in the RO water supply to the manual bicarbonate mixing and to the granule flow acid mixing system. As you see in this picture, the typical location of the ultra filter is on the back of the machine or in some newer technology, they, it's actually included internal of, uh, of some of the new technologies. And these are the potential advantages of uh, ultra-pure uh, dialysate. There's less inflammatory stimulus, less morbidity associated with inflammation, reduced incidence of beta-2 microglobulin amyloid disease, improved responsiveness to erythropoietin, improved nutritional status, improved preservation of residual renal function.
Our next uh, segment is to clarify the composition of the dialysate and how it's proportioned. Proportioning refers to the percentage ratio of the three components of dialysate, the acid, the sodium bicarbonate, and the purified water. Um, in the 45X proportioning system, which is the predominant proportioning um, in our current technology, one part of acid is mixed with 1.72 parts of sodium bicarb to 42.28 parts of purified water. As you can see, water makes up 94% of uh, the compound and is the most abundant in volume that our patients are exposed to. The sodium bicarbonate circle 33 setting displayed on the screen is operator program. The base load has two components, the circled acetate and the acid concentrate portion and the sodium bicarbonate. The 33 reflected in the screen does not include the acetate that is part of the acid concentrate. If the MD requires a total base load of 33, and this clinical staff programs the machine to 33, the resulting total baseload experience will not be 33 milliequivalents of uh, bicarbonate, but 33 plus the eight milliequivalents of acetate, resulting in a total baseload of 41 and could lead to alkalosis. Is the physician ordering how the total patient baseload experience should be or how the machine program should be set? or should clinical staff know to compensate for the acetate base load and adjust the sodium bicarbonate program accordingly to deliver the physician's prescription. Dialysis staff and physician must be in harmony between prescribed versus machine setting. This is a result of physician and dialysis staff not in harmony of say, setting versus base load. Fresenius Medical Care Alert dated August 27, 2012 reported recent analysis performed using FMCNA hemodialysis patient safety data confirms that alkalosis is a significant risk factor associated with cardiopulmonary arrest in the dialysis unit independent of an additive to the risk of cardiopulmonary arrest associated with pre-dialysis hypokalemia. In summary, the nephrologist must be intimately involved in the water purification process and has many responsibilities. RO system design may vary among the different facilities. Carbon filters and RO membrane are crucial components of the water system and ensure patient safety. RO membrane, ultrafilter, and dialyzer can effectively block bacteria, endotoxin, and virus. Ultrapure dialysate can benefit patients, and understanding the relationship of the sodium bicarbonate acid and machine setting can mitigate issues with alkalosis. A dialysis patient is exposed to more water in three years than an, um, an individual consumed in a lifetime. Metaphorically, this slide is to leave an impression that the water system, by the volume of dialyzing fluid our patients are exposed to, can be equated to be the largest syringe that we use in practice, and the dialyzer equates to be the needle that introduces that fluid to the patients. Thank you.